Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ryan Vatsek from the Indie Music Academy, and today we're gonna talk about electronic press kits, also known as EPKs. Now, uh, this is mine on the screen. I'm gonna go over it, and this is a direct response video to this video that I made almost a year ago now uh, called How to Make an Electronic Press Kit for Musicians. And on this video, there was a great comment that was left by this guy down here. Nice guy, he says, just a suggestion, show us what an EPK looks like <laughs> while you're a good looking dude, visuals help too, which, that's a great comment, very helpful, and I appreciate those comments. And so the timing is just great. Right now, I'm making new EPKs, and that's plural, by the way, for my new song that's coming out, Home. And in this video, I go over the two types of EPKs that you need as an artist. In this video, I go over the two types of EPKs that you need as an artist. One is your general EPK, and it's probably the EPK that you normally think about when you think about an EPK. It's your artist bio, it's some um, press photos, it's videos and stuff for the industry, right? It's basically the way that I described it in the last video is that it's like an about page for the music industry. It's specifically for them. Sometimes it's even a password protected page. Your fans basically aren't supposed to see it. There's going to be content on there that your fans just shouldn't see all in one place. It's not the fan experience, it's an industry experience. So that's the first type of EPK. The second type of EPK is a press kit that you make specifically for a song that you're releasing. And I'll show you that type of EPK that I've made for my new song, Home. It has stuff on it, uh, like a private streaming link, it has the lyrics, and a whole bunch, it's a different setup. So I'm gonna show you that as well. So let's head over to my artist EPK. Like I said in the other video, it has basically everything that a blogger or a magazine writer magazine writer, <laughs> just a writer, right, would need to write a piece on you. So I'm going to go over some similar things from the last video, just in case you haven't seen it. And I'll walk you through every single piece of my EPK. So first, we have the artist bio. And this is a shorter artist bio. You can have your long form artist bio, which would be like three or four paragraphs. Um, this is not that. This is the short artist bio. And you'll notice that when I wrote this, this is really geared toward industry accomplishments, right? It's not really going into my backstory, like Ryan learned music from the age of five and he always loved music and stuff like that. That's not what this bio is for. Remember, this page, this EPK page, is for press. It's for uh, potential bloggers and playlisters who want to either use your music or share your music or share it and write a piece about you. So you have to give them a little something, right? You have to tell them what you've been up to lately. And there's some things that I included in this bio that I just want to point out. So first, I identified my genre, the, the genre that I want them to use, right? So I said, uh, Ryan is an American folk pop singer-songwriter, right? I, I wanted to put that specifically in there. And then something else that I put in was the way that I wanted them to describe my music. So next I put heartfelt lyrics, passionate vocals, and an honest emotive delivery. That's something that I just came up, I thought that would be pretty good, that described my music. And the reason why it's in this artist bio is because if they want to steal that, great. <laughs> Let them steal that and put it in their article because I'm controlling the narrative of what I want my artist brand to be. And, you know, another thing, just a little side note, that if you don't give them any information, these bloggers are just going to have to Google you and they're going to have to find out stuff for themselves. And if you're not even showing up in a Google search, if uh, maybe you're having a hard time moving up in the rankings, or you have a little bit of search engine optimization trouble, they're not gonna have anything. And all they will have is this artist bio. So I'm actually coming out with a training about how to raise your rankings in Google, how to show up in a Google search and in a YouTube search. So stay tuned for that. It's gonna be a really great training that's gonna help a lot of musicians who are struggling with being found because they're just not found in a Google search. So stay tuned for that. 
a little side note, but going back to the artist bio, Another thing that I included in this artist bio are some similar artists. You can see I listed Dean Lewis, Philip Phillips, and also down here, Sean Mendes, James Arthur, that kind of stuff. I just wanted to put that in just to give them a better idea of what type of artist I'm shooting to be, right? Of course, they're going to make their own judgments when they listen to the song, but I just want to try to control that narrative again, uh, try to make them think of me in the way that I want them to think of me because I'm trying to brand myself a certain way and I'm spending a lot of time doing that. You're spending a lot of time on your artist branding too, hopefully, and so this is just another way <laughs> if they write an article on you that they're just not running off with something that you don't want, right? I think of my musical career as a business and you should too, and if they derail all of your hard work, that's bad. So those are the reasons. Now, going back to something I said earlier in this video, you want to jam pack this artist bio with a lot of your accomplishments, right? Give them something to sink their teeth into. That's why I included a few things like Ryan's been featured in the San Diego Union Tribune, SD Voyager Magazine, uh, I was a writer on audio issues, stuff like that so that they can literally have stuff to put in their article. I mean, you gotta, you gotta feed them stuff, otherwise you just might not look interesting enough to write about and then they may just skip you. They might write about the more interesting artist, which is not really helping your career. It's not really helping your search engine optimization, right? If someone Googles your name and no articles come up, that's a bummer. So another thing that I included is just uh, some of the other accomplishments like sharing the stage with Kina Grannis and the Mowgli's. That gives me a little bit uh, more credibility and clout uh, where they're like, hey, this artist is actually doing something. And then I also included how I scored uh, the PBS film Floating Horses, which is just kind of cool musically. Not related to these songs, but it's just a cool musical thing that, again, gives the writer something to talk about. Okay, we spent a lot of time on artist bio, but it's because artist bios are really important, and a lot of artists just don't know how to write their own bio. So hopefully that was a good guide for you. And let's move on to the next section before this video gets too long. So I put all of my upcoming releases in this SoundCloud playlist. There's a couple of reasons why I use SoundCloud. One is that a lot of people don't have Spotify. That goes the other way. A lot of people don't have Apple Music. If you just put a Spotify playlist here with your songs and the blogger or the playlister maybe doesn't have Spotify or Apple Music, that's not good because they can't listen to your song all the way through. So SoundCloud is just a great free way to get your whole song up on there so there's no issues, anyone can stream it. The other thing I wanna point out is that I also have a full streaming link for my song EPK for home for the release that's coming out. You can listen to the whole song right here, but I also have future songs listed in this playlist as well. And the reason for that is if I'm doing a lot of promotion for my new song, Home, and I am sending it to playlisters and I'm sending it to bloggers, maybe they're not interested in Home. Maybe they like my release that's further down the line better. Maybe that's a better fit. So I just want to have that available so that they could see that more is down the pipe. They can listen to my future songs and they can just get those wheels turning so that they know, hey, I actually think that this song would be better. I'm gonna stay tuned for that. I just want them to know about it. So, moving really quickly through the rest of this EPK, I got some press photos. You can have more, you can have less. Uh, something cool that I did is that if you click on the photo, it'll automatically start to download, which is kind of cool. Then I have some videos, my two looping videos. You want to demonstrate how you play, especially if you're sending your EPK to a booking agent. So, what I did are my live videos. I don't have Actually, at this point of filming, I don't have any cinematic music videos right now. I just have these live videos of me performing live and looping, and I think they're pretty cool, and they're on this YouTube channel. So if you want to see an example of just a great way to demonstrate your talents and to demonstrate your live playing ability, check out these two videos. They're on this channel, and I'll link them in the description below. And then lastly, you want to have your contact information on your EPK, and the way that I did it I think is pretty nice, kind of classy. I don't have a booking agent or anything, so I just say Ryan Vacek is an independent self-managed artist, and then I just give my email to contact. I personally don't think uh, forms are a great thing to have on an EPK, but that, you know, it won't make a difference, so that's just personal preference. Uh, I just put 
you know, a clickable email so that once they click it, it opens up in Gmail or Outlook or whatever they use, Apple Mail, whatever it is, and they could send me an email if they're interested in whatever they're interested in working with me. So that is my artist EPK. Just to recap, it has a bio that's geared towards industry. It's geared towards bloggers and playlisters. And basically, it's all about trying to get a certain sound in their head, putting a lot of related artists, and then putting a lot of accomplishments. Next, I have all of my upcoming releases, which right now I only have two songs that are fully recorded. Home is coming out in a couple weeks. Then my song Taking Over Me, it isn't even announced yet. Then I have my press photos, some great videos that demonstrate my playing ability, and then my artist contact right here. Okay, done. Artist EPK, out of the way. Let's talk about the more mysterious EPK, the one that I don't see anyone on the internet talking about, but every artist should make one of these when they're releasing a song, and that is the song EPK. Now, just to recap, this is also for industry as well. This is not for fans. This has industry-only stuff on the page. All right, let's just go top to bottom. I wanna explain everything on this page so that you can make one for yourself and really utilize this great tool. So the title, Home, new single by Ryan Vatsek. I have a cool countdown timer. I'm not sure if your web builder has it, but I think that this just adds a really great element of anticipation showing that yes, this is a release. We are preparing before the release and you should too. Like this would be something that, for example, I send to maybe a playlister and I want to get them on board for my release. I want them to include my new song on their Spotify playlist. And I believe in organic promotion uh, as well as paid promotion. So I'm, I'm not saying one or the other is all you have to pick. Do both. I think both are great. So this would be a great organic way to connect with a playlister by sending them to an EPK for your new song, kind of like this. So I have the song in a SoundCloud embed where they could listen to the whole song and they could decide whether they like it. And the reason for that for this page is that it's not on Spotify yet. So if I'm pitching it to Spotify playlisters, I need to upload it somewhere else because it's literally not released yet. And I wanna get them on board ahead of time. I want them to have the same anticipation that I'm building for my fan base. Okay, so let's keep on going down. This is something that I've never seen before. Maybe it exists, but I've never seen it on YouTube at least or anyone explaining it to you guys. And this is a separate mailing list just for industry. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a list of bloggers, of playlisters, of maybe even promoters, booking agents, all these industry folk that they're subscribed to a special list just for them. And I'm just making it an option for all of the promoting that I'm doing, and you'll know if you've taken my course that I'm a big fan of email direct marketing. Uh, so I'm trying to make a separate list just for industry members. And so if you decide to do this, I just wanna point out one very important thing. It's this line right here. We will not subscribe you to marketing emails. And I just put that there because I want them to know without a shadow of a doubt that they're not going to get my, you know, hey, just an update emails. They're not going to get, you know, hey, my new song is out or like, you know, whatever I would send to the fans. I want this to just be for press. And, you know, I confirm that by the button saying, yes, I want industry only notifications. Again, this is so important. I want to give them that promise that I'm not just going to sign them up to a bunch of emails that they don't want and they don't need, okay? So this is something I'm experimenting with and I wanna tell you about it because I think it could be really, really good, especially as you're doing more promoting and you're doing more song releases. This list will start to build, especially with probably bloggers and playlisters that wanna follow your career. So there's that. Next, on a song EPK, I list the lyrics in full and you should too. And there are other places you should put the lyrics on your website, but they definitely should be here because if someone's listening to your song, it'd be great for them to understand all of the words. And I don't think I need to explain that any further. Just I have my lyrics here. You should too. And then okay, we're coming up to the end of this video. What I did to make this page is I just duplicated 
this in my web builder. So if you're in Squarespace, you can easily duplicate pages. If you're in WordPress, same thing. I'm in Kajabi. I just duplicated this page and added all of this song specific stuff on top. So at the bottom, we have all the same info. Approved artist bio, right? I already went over all of this. The same press photos, same video, and then contact information. Of course, you always need to have your contact information on your EPK. So that is how I finished out this song EPK. And it's really important to have both and send the right EPK to the right person for the right reason. I think you guys get it. All right, so I hope that this video was helpful to you. If this is the first time that you're here at the channel, I just wanna encourage you to hit the like button and subscribe because there's a ton more videos that I have planned surrounding my song release where I'm gonna share with you everything that I'm doing so that you can get more ideas for your music and build a better career for yourself. And plus, I have a ton of old videos old, they're not really that old, but I have a ton of past videos that are also super valuable, so you should check them all out. I already said that I have a couple videos linked in the description below that are already super valuable if you're trying to build your musical career. So thanks so much for watching. Once again, I'm Ryan with the Indie Music Academy. Check me out, link in description, and I'll see you guys in a future video.